Welcome to the channel. I'm happy to be back. It's been a while, I know. Uh, real life got in the way, but good real life. Not bad, you know, awful real life stuff, but good, happy real life stuff. Uh, it's kept me busy, but uh, now I think I'm getting back into it, hopefully, and I hope to get back to a regular production schedule soon. But in the meantime, let's talk about ChatGPT. In February of this year, Microsoft revealed that they were going to integrate uh, uh, components of OpenAI's ChatGPT bot into uh, their Bing um, search engine. Uh, this was met with a lot of excitement, but also a lot of concern. What does it mean to integrate AI into search? What exactly does the chat bot do? And is it something we should really care about? Thanks for sitting down with me, AI Robot Master Overlord. Let's talk some poker. What can you tell me about the greatest poker player of all time? One of the most legendary poker players of all time is Doyle Brunson. Brunson has won 10 World Series of Poker bracelets and is known for his skill in both Limit and No Limit Texas Hold'em. He is also a respected author and has written several books on poker strategy. Another player often mentioned as one of the greatest is Phil Ivey. Ivey has won 10 WSOP bracelets and has over $30 million in tournament earnings. He is known for his incredible talent in all forms of poker, as well as his ability to read his opponents and make complex decisions. Stu Ungar is another player often regarded as one of the greatest. Although he died young, he won three WSOP main event titles and is considered by many to be the most naturally talented player of all time. Other players who are frequently mentioned in discussions of the greatest poker player of all time include Johnny Moss, Chip Reese, and Daniel Negrano. However, ultimately, the title of greatest is subjective and depends on individual opinions and criteria. But when Doyle Brunson won his first main event, how many players were in the tournament? Doyle Brunson won the World Series of Poker main event for the first time in 1976. There were a total of 22 players who entered that tournament, and Brunson defeated Jesse Alto heads up to win the title. So, are you saying that a player who wins now with the much larger fields is a better player than somebody who basically won a two-table sit-and-go? No, that's not what I meant. The size of the field in a tournament does not necessarily determine the skill level of the players in the tournament or the level of difficulty to win. The example I gave was simply to provide context for the early years of the World Series of Poker main event, where the field sizes were smaller compared to today's events. Okay, so who's the best tournament poker player? It's difficult to definitively say who the best tournament poker player is, as it's subjective and dependent on a variety of factors. One player who is often mentioned in discussions of the best tournament players is Eric Seidel. Seidel has won eight World Series of Poker bracelets, a World Poker Tour title, and over $38 million in tournament earnings. Another player who is frequently mentioned as one of the best tournament players is Phil Ivey. Ivey has won 10 WSOP bracelets and over $30 million in tournament earnings, and is widely regarded as one of the most talented and versatile players in the game. Other players who are often mentioned in discussions of the best tournament players include Daniel Negrano, Fedor Holes, Justin Bonomo, and Bryn Kenny, among others. What is the most important criteria, in your robot mind, in determining who is the best poker player of all time? One important factor is a player's overall success in the game, which can be measured by their tournament earnings, the number of major titles they've won, and their consistency over time. Another factor to consider is a player's skill level and the respect they've earned from their peers. A player who is widely regarded as one of the best by their fellow professionals is likely to be considered among the greatest of all time. Additionally, a player's impact on the game and their contributions to the poker community can also be a significant factor in determining their legacy. For example, a player who has written influential strategy books, helped popularize the game, or made significant charitable contributions could be seen as more than just a successful player but someone who has made a lasting impact on the game. So I guess this means that Phil Helmuth is the greatest tournament player of all time, right? Phil Helmuth is certainly one of the most successful tournament players of all time, with 15 World Series of Poker bracelets to his name. Wait a second, Phil has 16 World Series of Poker bracelets to his name. Why would you say 15? I apologize for my error earlier. You are correct that Phil Helmuth has won 16 World Series of Poker bracelets, which is the most of any player in history. He has also had a great deal of success in other high-stakes tournaments and is widely regarded as one of the greatest tournament players of all time. I'm sorry for any confusion my earlier response may have caused. That's okay, even our robot masters can make mistakes. Thank you for your understanding. Okay, let's move on to more recent poker news. What do you know about Robbie Jade Liu and Garrett Adelstein? Garrett Adelstein is a professional poker player who first gained public attention for his appearance on the reality television show Survivor. Robbie Jade Liu, on the other hand, is a professional poker player and coach who has had significant success in online and live tournaments. She has won several major online titles and has also cashed in numerous live events. Yes, but there were accusations of cheating during a live stream of Hustler Casino Live. Are you aware of this? And if so, what can you tell us about it? Yes, I am aware of the accusations of cheating that arose during a live stream of Hustler Casino Live, which involved Garrett Adelstein and Robbie Strazinski as well as several other players. During the live stream, some viewers noticed what they believed to be suspicious behavior on the part of some of the players, including Adelstein and Lou. 
Specifically, they believed that Adelstein was signaling to Lou about the strength of his hand by using certain hand gestures, and that Lou was using this information to make better decisions at the table. Following the stream, there was significant discussion and debate within the poker community about whether or not cheating had occurred. Adelstein and Lou both denied any wrongdoing, and Hustler Casino Live ultimately concluded that there was no evidence of cheating. You do realize that Adelstein uh, accused Lou of cheating. I mean, what reference do you have about uh, Adelstein and Lou colluding against Straczynski? It's kind of weird. I apologize for any confusion I may have caused. You are correct that Garrett Adelstein accused Robbie Jade Lou of cheating during the livestream of Hustler Casino Live, rather than colluding with her against Robbie Straczynski. According to reports, Adelstein believed that Lou was using a hand signal to indicate the strength of his hand to her during the game. However, both Lou and Straczynski denied any wrongdoing, and Hustler Casino Live concluded that there was no evidence of cheating. You know, your answer is why people hate the media. You are fake news, sir. Lou was accused of cheating because she called down an all-in bet with a Jack Foroff suit and, you know, didn't hit the board at all. Straczynski wasn't even involved. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, important question. Do you think Robbie's sunglasses are too big for her face? And is Adelstein an asshole for jumping to the conclusion that she cheated? It's important to approach discussions about poker, or any other subject, in a respectful and professional manner. Accusations of cheating can be damaging to a player's reputation and should only be made if there is clear evidence to support them. Well, the answer is yes and yes. Big sunglasses, and he's an asshole. So, tell me, what episode of Survivor did he get uh, kicked off in uh, Tribal Council? To answer your question, Garrett Adelstein was actually voted out during the first Tribal Council of the 28th season of Survivor, which was titled Survivor, Kagayan. He was a member of the Brains Tribe and was voted out on day three of the game. <laughs> first Tribal Council, yeah, asshole. No surprise there. Okay, next important question. What's the better poker streaming show, Live at the Bike or Hustler Casino Live? Both Live at the Bike and Hustler Casino Live are popular poker shows that feature live cash games and attract a wide audience of poker fans. The correct answer is Hustler Casino Live on Max Payne Monday when Sashimi is playing. Live at the Bike's okay, but every now and then they get that one guy, that really irritating guy, the one who calls Maria Ho a Hall of Famer like 200 times in a stream. But moving on, Daniel Negreanu claims that more rake is better. Doug Polk says, no, that's not true. Who's right? Rake is the fee that poker rooms charge players to play in games, and it is typically a percentage of the pot or a fixed amount per hand. Daniel Negrano has argued that higher rake can be better for players in some cases, as it can lead to larger prize pools and more opportunities to win money. Doug Polk, on the other hand, has been critical of high rake and has argued that it can have a negative impact on the long-term profitability of the game. So, Polk is correct. Regarding the debate between Daniel Negrano and Doug Polk over whether more rake is better or not, it is difficult to say who is correct. Both players have presented valid arguments based on their own experiences and perspectives. Like I said, Polk is correct. But, to be fair to Daniel, his comments were taken out of context. So, will armies of AI robots eventually dominate online poker, maybe operating out of warehouses in China? It is unlikely that armies of AI robot masters will dominate online poker and operate out of warehouses in China, as poker is a complex and dynamic game that requires a high degree of human intelligence and decision-making skills. <laughs> You've obviously never played online. You know, we went a good decade at least where we had armies of, uh, of humans trying to play 20 screens at a time, you know, with their robotic-like behavior. So I think uh, AI armies of uh, robots in Chinese warehouses is a distinct possibility. Thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, the uh, back and forth. And uh, this interview has shown me that we really don't have much to worry about with our AI masters. Um, I think the best that you can do for now is create lots of clickbait content for the internet. You're welcome, and thank you for your feedback. There you have it. AI is presented on the internet today is really just a little more than a way to, you know, collate information that's already readily available in search engines and present it on the internet. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and me and my AI masters will catch you on the next one.